My relationship with Christian Cage spans over 23 years. We broke in to the big time at the very same time. And in a lot of ways, we made one another's careers because we had so many historic matches together. We put each other on the map. Neither one of us would probably be in the same place in our careers if it wasn't for the other, but there's always been that competitive nature. There's always been that part of us that didn't click. And I noticed that once I would do something, he would do it. Once I would win something, he would try and win it. And it just really made me think, like, why is this guy so obsessive over me? And when Big Money Matt showed up at AEW, of course, a few months later, Christian Cage shows up at AEW. Christian Cage, one of the great world champions ever. It was a surreal feeling when I walked through the curtain at Revolution. It's one of those things where, you, you know, you're kind of almost even in your own head a little bit too. Like, I've been working so hard for this moment. People that have no idea that I, I put in basically a year's worth of work to try to get back to this point where I could step in the ring and compete again. So it was kind of a culmination of all those, those minutes, those seconds of scratching and clawing and, and grinding. Did you hear that ovation? Christian Cage in AEW. They are standing here at Daly's place. I didn't come back to step in that ring and do a greatest hits tour, slap my chest and look for my peeps. I came back to be better than I ever was and I came back to win championships. When Christian Cage took away my victory at the Double or Nothing Casino Battle Royal, I was absolutely apoplectic. Do I have something to prove? Yeah. I mean, getting my career back after being retired for seven years is a gift, and I don't take that for granted. So every time I step through those ropes into that ring, of course I have something to prove to myself. All he had to do was show me a little bit of respect. Oh, now just mocking the five-second pose. I can't say I'm surprised that it's happened again, that this conflict has, has kind of been brought up again. I was happy to leave the past in the past, but I just think it's never gonna happen. Yeah, they locked me in a cage. It was, uh, you know, some, some mental warfare, trying to scare me, trying to scare me into retiring, and then Matt handed me some half-assed check. We've been friends, we've been enemies, but I would think after 23 years of doing what we have done together, you would have at least an iota of respect for me. You show that you have no respect for me. You have no respect for the industry. You have no respect for the pecking order at AEW. And when you turned on me and you eliminated me, you signed the end of your deal, the end of your career. How have I changed? That's a beautiful thing about me. I haven't changed. I'm the same old asshole that I've always been. See, I, and I'm fine with that. I'm OK with it. Either you like me or you don't like me. It's fine. That's the way that I've always been. And that's how I keep an even keel. But Matt Hardy, see, Matt, Matt's a different animal. Matt's insecure. He needs people. He needs that pat on the back. He needs people to tell him how good he is. That's why he surrounded himself with the HFO. This match between myself and Christian Cage is, of course, going to be a fair fight. I can ensure that the Hardy family office will not interfere. I don't need the HFO to defeat Christian Cage. I've been beating him for 23 years. Of course, I can beat Christian Cage. Oh, here comes Christian Cage. Going right for Matt. Those guys have been feuding for years. Matt Hardy, you've been walking around saying the truth is the truth. I mean, you have it on a T-shirt, so it must be true. You want the truth, Matt? Here it is. I hope you can handle it. The truth is, Fighter Fest night one, Matt Hardy loses to Christian Cage. Christian Cage, take note of this. We are two of the only people that have fought on huge global televised events over the course of four decades. I beat you in the 90s, I beat you in the 2000s, I beat you in the 2010s, and now I'm gonna beat you in the 2020s. And you will learn to respect Big Money Matt. And when you say my name, you will say my name with reverence because this disrespect you have shown me since coming to AEW, it all ends at Fighter Fest night one when Matt Hardy kicks Christian Cage's ass. Only a little bit of the history between you and Ethan Page. The nail in your coffin. Every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. The nail 
in your coffin! Hell, it was like my sixth match. I was gonna wrestle Ethan Page, and I showed up, and I didn't even know who the hell he was. And I knew that just pissed him off. The history, the bad blood between all ego Ethan Page and Darby Allen runs so deep. Now, it's my return to you. Darby Allen, you're not done with me. My goal is not to beat Darby Allen. My goal is to exterminate Darby Allen. I threw him down those steps. He came back. I threw him into the crowd. He came back, hell, even on the independence. I busted his head, broke his elbow, and then he shows up in AEW? That's a very conflicted, unique young man. You were the big fish in the little pond. Really? And the fact that I made it to AEW before you, he couldn't stand. Ethan Page is all elite. The coffin match is gonna cripple Darby Allen mentally. A nail in your coffin. You asked for this match, Ethan. Every time you go up for a coffin drop, you're gonna think of me. What more am I gonna have to prove to you? Every time you even think about doing a coffin drop, you're gonna think of me. I'm just ready to return the favor, Ethan. And every time you do a coffin drop, you're gonna think of me laying you in the coffin and closing it shut on your confidence forever! Darby Allen, Ethan Page, this story is over. The nail in your coffin! So I went to New Japan Pro Wrestling for the first time in, in 2008, but they considered me a young boy for a couple years until I turned into a superstar and a, and a legitimate legend. IWGP Tag Team Championships four different times. I was a founding member of the world-changing, worldwide known Bullet Club. And the Machine Gun returning to New Japan Pro Wrestling is as big of a return of, of any, in any company, anywhere in the world. So Japan as the country, it was like a second home to me. I would spend a month at a time there away from my family. Four weeks on the road in Japan, five days at home, six days at home in America, back to Japan for three weeks. Spent eight years there, man. A lot, a lot, a lot of days there. You know, New Japan Pro Wrestling changed my life. When they brought me in, they hired me in 2008. They, they gave me an opportunity that I'll never forget. And that's why I always consider New Japan Pro Wrestling home. I've known John Moxley for 20 years, and we grew together. We went to different companies together. We've known each other for a long time. We know each other as performers for a long time. From the Independence in Cincinnati, Ohio, to the stage of night one at Fighter Fest in Austin, Texas, live on Dynamite. Listen, he's a great performer, a hell of a wrestler, but it makes me sick, man, that he's got the IWGP United States Championship. The Machine Gun spent eight years in New Japan Pro Wrestling. How many times did Moxley go to New Japan Pro Wrestling? Eight times? It's time to bring the IWGP United States Championship back home, back home to the elite. The eight years I spent in New Japan Pro Wrestling, the seven or eight New Japan Cups I was in, all the G1s I was in, man. I went to the G1 Final 2012. That's what makes this difference in this match, man. This is why I'm gonna take the IWGP United States Championship from you, Mox, because I know the New Japan Pro Wrestling style. I know exactly what it's gonna take to take the championship from you. That is the most intimidating stare in all of AEW.
just unmitigated power, the savagery, the brutality of Miro. My and God. he's got the waist lock cinched in. Darby's bent in There's half. nowhere for Darby to go. We've got a new champion. My name is Miro, and I am the Redeemer. I am the undefeated TNT champion. But a TNT title means much more than just letter and gold to me. It's my divine right to be great, to have a hot wife, to be undefeated, to be God's favorite champion. And this title, he has made me different. So I will change it like it changed me.